In this video, we're computing the integral of a rational expression where we have a cubic denominator. So the natural tool to use here is partial fractions decomposition. But the challenge at the beginning is how do we factor a cubic denominator? And the first thing that we should try is to guess a small integer root of this cubic denominator. Now to explain the relationship between roots and factors, we can imagine that this denominator factors into three linear factors, And that may or may not be the case. It may just be one linear factor and one irreducible quadratic factor, but it doesn't ruin the argument here. So we imagine this thing factors into x minus a times x minus b times x minus c. Well, where are the roots of this polynomial? In other words, where is it equal to zero? We can tell by inspection because it's factored that our roots occur at x equals a, x equals b, and x equals c because each of those values makes one of the factors equal to zero, and zero times anything is zero. So those are our roots. Now what we want to do for this factorization process is do this process backwards. If we notice that x equals a is a root, it automatically means x minus a is a factor of this polynomial. That means x minus a divides this polynomial evenly. So let's see how to put this into practice. When I start a problem like this, I normally start with trying x equals plus or minus 1 to see if that's a root. Then I move on to plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3. And actually on this one, the first guess that I took was a correct guess. Just to illustrate what happens with an incorrect guess, let's try negative 1 first. We just sub that into our polynomial, and I end up with a negative 1 cubed, that's negative 1, minus 2 times negative 1 squared, well that's just minus 2 because negative 1 squared is 1. Minus 5 times negative 1, that's plus 5, and then we had a plus 6. Does that equal 0? It looks like it fails because I have a negative 1 minus 2, that's negative 3 plus 5, which is 2 plus 6, giving me a total of 8. All right, so that one's no good. So we move on to the next natural guess, which is plus 1. Plugging that in, I get 1 for the first term, minus 2 minus 5 plus 6. 1 minus 2, that's negative 1, minus 5 is negative 6, plus 6. It gives me zero. So we just found a root of this cubic polynomial, x equals 1. And that means x minus 1 is a factor. And that means x minus 1 divides this cubic polynomial evenly. So if we set up the long division, we start guessing what do we multiply x minus 1 by to get this cubic polynomial. And we would start with an x squared so we can match the x cubed in the leading term. When I distribute that over x minus 1, I get x cubed minus x squared. Then we compute how much we missed by, in other words, we subtract that. The x cubes cancel here, and I have a negative 2x minus negative x squared. That gives me a negative x squared. And then I have a minus 5x and a plus 6. Now we guess our next term. That's a negative x. When I distribute that over x minus 1, it gives me negative x squared plus x. And again, we subtract. Again, the leading terms cancel by design. And then I have a negative 5x minus x, that's negative 6x, and a plus 6. So our next guess, negative 6, when I distribute that over x minus 1, I get negative 6x plus 6. And then when I subtract, I get 0. So there's no remainder. In other words, it divides evenly. So our denominator has factored into x minus 1 multiplied by x squared minus x minus 6. With any luck, the remaining quadratic factor factors further into two linear factors, although in some of these examples it may be an irreducible quadratic, but we know how to deal with that in our partial fractions decomposition. This case is very nice because I end up with actually two linear factors for that quadratic part. We propose a factorization into two linear factors, and then we guess and check with the numbers until we get it to work. It looks like it's going to be a minus 3 and a plus 2. And just double checking real quick, that's x squared plus 2x minus 3x. That gives me the right cross term, minus 6. So we're good. So this denominator has factored into three linear factors, and we can rewrite the integrand as x plus 1 divided by x minus 1 times x minus 3 times x plus 2. And the partial fractions decomposition here is a over the first factor, x minus 1, plus b over the second factor, x minus 3, plus c over the third factor, x plus 2. To simplify this equation, we multiply both sides by the least common denominator, which is all of these factors, x minus 1 times x minus 3 times x plus 2. On the left-hand side, that leaves me with an x plus 1. When I distribute this least common denominator, 
to the A containing term, that x minus 1 cancels, but the other two factors survive. So I have A times x minus 3 times x plus 2, and it's similar for the other two terms. In the B containing term, the x minus 3 cancels, leaving me with an x minus 1 times x plus 2. And in the C containing term, the x plus 2 cancels, leaving me with x minus 1 times x minus 3. Now this equation is very quickly solved using the substitution approach. The equation we've written down has to be true for all values of x, and that means we can just sub in whatever values we want. If I sub in x equals 3, for example, the left side gives me a 4, and then on the right side, I notice that a has an x minus 3 factor stuck to it, and that's 0. c also has an x minus 3 stuck to it, so that's 0. The only survivor here is the b-containing term. So I have b times x minus 1, well that's 3 minus 1, which is 2, and a 3 plus 2, which is 5. So 4 is equal to 10b. That means b is equal to 4 over 10, or 2 fifths, and we have our first constant. Now we sub in x equals negative 2. That kills the a and b containing terms because they're multiplied by a factor that's equal to 0. And c is the only survivor. So on the left-hand side, we have a negative 1. On the right-hand side, we have a c times negative 2 minus 1, that's negative 3, times a negative 2 minus 3, that's negative 5. So 15c over there on the right-hand side is equal to negative 1. That means c is negative 1 over 15. And finally, we sub in x equals 1. On the left-hand side, that gives us a 2. And our b and c containing terms both vanish. a is the only survivor here. Subbing in x equals 1, I end up with a times negative 2 times a 3. That's a negative 6a on the right-hand side. When I divide by that, a is negative 2 over 6 or negative 1 over 3. Now when we sub all this back into our integral, and again we're looking at our original partial fractions proposal here, I get a over x minus 1, so that's a negative 1 third over x minus 1, plus a b over x minus 3, and b is 2 fifths, so I have 2 fifths over x minus 3, plus a c over x plus 2, that's negative 1 15th over x plus 2 dx, and we're very fortunate in this case because each of these pieces is integrated easily in one step. These are all expressions that result in a natural log of the denominator when we find the antiderivative. So I end up with a negative one-third natural log, absolute value x minus 1, plus two-fifths natural log of the denominator x minus 3, minus one-fifteenth natural log x plus 2, and don't forget to put a plus c on it, and that's it. If you enjoyed this video, or at least found it useful, check out another one by clicking one of the links on the left, or click the Zach's Lab logo on the right to explore dozens of physics and math playlists. As always, you can leave your questions, comments, and requests in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Thanks for watching Zach's Lab, and best of luck on your math and physics journey.